Okay, uh, thank you very much everyone for joining us. Uh, joining us. Uh, this is a technical community breakout room for the DFI discussion. Uh, my name is Akinori Maimura, as uh, introduced. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm for the Japan Network Information Center, JPNEC, uh, local, and then uh, I'm really happy to receive all of you as the Japanese national here. So uh, that's, that's another, another thing. And then uh, I'm, I'm the moderator here, and then uh, the, the, the lady next, next to me is the, introduce yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Fung, uh, Asia Pacific Youth IGF coordinator. Happy to be here uh, as rapporteur for this session today. Okay, thank you very much. Then uh, uh, we have the still uh, eight, 75 minutes or something, then uh, it's uh, quite, quite su sufficient. And I, let, me, uh, let me proceed one round of the self-introduction. Maybe it will be good for, the, for making a team. Then uh, maybe I, I think there is a microphone. And then I'd like to start with. Uh, Hi. Ah, so this could you Could you pass it to the, please pass it to the, uh, uh, Miss, Mr. Holland? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, please start the, the round of the self introduction. Thanks. Byron? Yes, you can call me Byron. Uh, Byron Holland, President and CEO of CIRA. We're the CCTLD operator for .ca Canada. Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Noir, and I'm the Vice President of Policy, Advocacy, and Investment at CIRA Community Investment. Kia ora, everyone. My name is Jordan Carter. I'm the Internet Governance and Policy Director at AUDA, the Australian Domain Administration, the .au CCTLD manager. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Annalise Williams, uh, Policy Advisor at the .au Domain Administration. Uh, good morning, Luisa River Lopes. I'm CEO for .pt CCTLD for Portugal. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marta Diaz, and, and I'm also from .pt, the Portuguese registry, and I'm member of the Board of Directors. Good morning, everyone. My name is Washington. I'm the analyst from the China Internet Network Information Center. Uh, hi, good morning. I'm Masayuki Hatta. Uh, my day job is uh, academic, but I came here as a, um, uh, a developer of several encrypted messaging services. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mona Gabala. I'm Senior Institutional Relations Advisor at Internet Society. Hi, everyone. My name is Einar Bolin. I'm with the American Registry for Internet Numbers. Uh, Bastian Hoslings from the RIPE NCC's uh, public policy team. RIPE NCC being the regional internet registry for Europe, Middle East, and parts of Central Asia. Uh, g'day everyone, I'm uh, Paul Wilson. I'm the head of APNIC, the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Address Registry, one of the five RIRs uh, that uh, are responsible for IP address management around the internet, thanks. Good morning, I'm Lee Sifour, Director General of Etno. And Edno is the European Telecom uh, Trade Association in Brussels. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Jasmine uh, from Dot Asia. We're based in Hong Kong as a registrar. Uh, nice to meet you all. Good morning, everybody. My name is Enrico Calandro, and I'm the project director of Cyber Resilience for Development. It's an EU funded project dealing with. Uh, cyber capacity building primarily for national sea search. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tilna Disanayaka from Sri Lanka CERT and working as capacity uh, cybersecurity specialist in capacity building research policies and projects. Thank you. Good morning, Sandra Hoferichter from Eurodic, which is the European IGF, but also chair of the board of Eurodic, the registry for .eu. Good morning, Maarten Bottemann. I'm an independent strategic advisor on internet governance matters and future internet, but I'm also on the ICANN board. And I'm also uh, in the GFCE uh, capacity building events for III around the world, which is truly good because like the, global, the, the national and the regional IGFs, it provides so much insight how diverse we are. And last but not least, I'm chairing the DCIOT. 
Uh, good morning, all. My name is Catherine Townsend. I run Measurement Lab, which provides the largest open data set about the performance of the internet around the world. Um, and I also advise the World Wide Web Foundation uh, policy and research started by Tim Berners-Lee. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jody Anderson. I'm the Internet Governance Lead for Internet New Zealand. We are the um, .nz CCTLD. Kia ora tato. I'm Vivian Maiderborn, also from uh, Internet New Zealand. Good morning, everybody. My name is Susan Chalmers, and I lead the Internet Governance Team at the National Telecommunications and Information Administration at the Department of Commerce. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lynn Hawes. I'm the Senior Technology Advisor for the uh, U.S. State Department's uh, Cyberspace and Digital Policy Bureau. Thank you. Very much. And then uh, some people are back uh, are here than me. If you don't mind, please join to the, the front uh, uh, front table. But uh, the mic, mic is now uh, going around. And uh, please introduce yourself, please. Yes, my name is Julius Endert from Germany, from DW Academy, from the uh, German public broadcaster Deutsche Welle. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Marco Aguani. I work for the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs, and I used to be technical community. Good morning, my name is Bertram Boya. I'm from the World Bank, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Boyan Kim. I'm working for KISA, Korea Internet and Security Agency, that KR registry. Hi, good morning. My name is Hyuna Choi, and I'm also from uh, KISA from Korea, and I'm in our Korean policy team. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So uh, uh, let's start the discussion. And then uh, I remember, but uh, I don't remember the, I, I don't remember some part of that. Uh, the Eileen uh, mentioned about uh, the, the three, uh, we have the four, three or four theme for the discussion. Uh, as I understand, I, I am the, well, one is the priority, second uh, process, and uh, the measurement of the success, and uh, who, who, uh, uh, who remembers the, the re remains? What's, what, what is that? Hmm? Cooperation modality. Okay, we have the, we have the four, uh, four, s four themes uh, to to have have discussed, and then uh, maybe it would be good to have the uh, you know sep uh, divide the hour. Right now, I I think we have the uh, still 70 minutes uh, into four, so that means the uh, 15 minutes, 15 minutes each, and some uh, the extra time. So uh, uh, that's uh, in that way. I, I'd like to uh, suggest you to start with the, the substantial priority of the DFI. Then, uh, if you had a particular uh, idea, or uh, uh, I'm really welcome welcome to have the uh, uh, those who kick, uh, make a kickstart of for for the discussion of the substantial priority. Anyone? Martin, yes, please. Uh, microphone coming. Maybe you pl pl please pass the p microphone to the. This one. Yeah, thank you very much, Martin. For uh, uh, please state your name and then. Uh, yes, Martin Bottomon. Uh, just thinking from a personal perspective, but if we're here together as technical community, I think we can celebrate that we've been able to keep the internet up and running uh, for the last uh, 50 years. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the most important thing for us is to make sure that we can continue doing that and uh, let not the, uh, the internet fragment by handing it over to an other kind of uh, governance than what we've been doing together. So let's make very clear that we are up to it and that we are committed to continue to do it. And maybe our emphasis is less on uh, the first uh, principles 
than to the 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 the, the third, fourth, and fifth. Just thinking out loud here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone? Well, we are j just starting it, so uh, if you had any uh, idea for the, the better, <laughs> uh, better, better way to the, the this uh, to proceed this discussion, that's that's also welcome. But uh, 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 may, maybe uh, that this part is uh, to to discuss uh, the substantial priority uh, out of the DFI. Uh, we have the some. Uh, some er element for the for this declaration. Then, yeah, please, Hatta-san, please uh, pass the microphone to Hatta-san. Where? I, I think we have the two microphones out here. Yeah. The other microphone. Ah, there, okay. There is two. Thank you, Hannah. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. State, yeah, state your name first, then, please. Okay, um, it's kind of ice-breaking thing. Um, I think DFI is a good first step, but um, I personally regret that it still has not expressly mentioned the importance of encryption, end-to-end -end encryption. Also, it implies it. Um, I as you know, encryption is the foundation of the internet, but in the internet, but uh, I think it's now under the attack, uh, like um, recent UK online safety bill or EU's move, the US's move to regulate end-to-end uh, encryption. End -to -end encry encryption. Um, so I really want to know what you think about uh, the uh, encryption or uh, policy, uh, enc enc encryption policy. I think the um, uh, le legislation, legislation of protection or uh, something of encryption be an uh, indicator of uh, success, mean success for a DFI. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. Again, again, please, with the microphone. Hi, uh, my name is Tilnam from Sri Lanka. I think it's all about data security. Mm -hmm. So under data security, it's about encryption and everything. So we can focus on the data security and the privacy part of, yeah. Okay. You mentioned uh, about uh, that in importance then, yes. Any other points? Okay, uh, pass the microphone to that. Thank you. Uh, so I would just offer building on your point. I do think that the people in this room are probably focused on three, four, and five, but I think it's important that we hold all of the stated values um, in the work that we do because a free flow of information is the intention of the internet and the web um, as our human rights. And if we only focus on the connectivity or sort of the nuts, of nuts and bolts of building the internet and not on how it is used and by whom and how it's observed and tracked, then uh, we may lose the overarching goal. So I, I think we can prioritize our intervention, but I think all of these are, are, are what we need to um, uh, have forefront in mind uh, in the work that we do. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. you then uh, Hattasan, please pass the microphone to this. Thank you. Um, yes. Up. Okay. Um, being also uh, a representative from the leadership panel, uh, I think this is a very important document. So my, my comment is more on the overall uh, document as such. We have this declaration for the future of the internet. We also have the Paris uh, Declaration uh, for Security. We have a lot of documents fl floating out there. Uh, to me, it's important we, we get a common understanding of the internet we want. Mm -hmm. That's also why the uh, leadership panel is trying to create a framework, hopefully that can embrace also this, 
Um, and uh, the dream is to have sustainable goals also for the internet. So we measure and we ensure that there is a progression and also that these uh, goals that we put in also in this declaration for the future of the internet is being held accountable to all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, this is a very good document, but I also hope we can merge it into one common understanding of what it is mm. we, we want the internet to be, but also what we want digital to be, because internet is much more than just the internet it was 20 years ago. We need to see it with AI, we need to see it with cybersecurity, we need to see it with uh, all the SDGs in general. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Internet we want. That's the that's slogan of the, the CIGF. Paul. Uh, Paul Wilson again. Um, I'm very glad to be here as part of the uh, technical community. Um, and I hope that being here, it's not the case that the technical community is, is disappearing uh, <laughs> in, in any way. Uh, one of the, um, this is on a different track, but one of the, um, the recent publications that I was involved with was in response to the idea under a tripartite internet governance model under the GDC that the uh, technical community might be somehow absorbed into, the, into civil society. And uh, I joined with um, CEOs of ICANN and Aaron in, in trying to say firmly that we didn't think that was the right idea at all, that the technical community has got a very strong basis, if, if not going all the way back to the start of WISIS, at least to the Working Group on Internet Governance and the IGF as one of the defined parts of this critical multi-stakeholder model that was discovered by the Working Group on Internet Governance as the secret, one of the secrets to the, the internet success. So I, I do think it's really powerful that we're that we're here as a technical community, very notable under those um, under those circumstances, and I hope that maybe we can um, also rely on um, the recognition in, of the technical community in this in this process to continue to strengthen and uh, and reinforce that that idea. Uh, but as to the as to the um, the points, uh, the five uh, principles of the DFI, I do think um, in response to the uh, MLab. I'm sorry, I've forgotten uh, uh, your name, uh, but um, Number, principle number two, um, promoting uh, a global internet that advances the free flow of information. Uh, the thing is, you can't advance the, flow, the free flow of information unless the free flow of information is possible. And I think what the, the technical infrastructure has always allow, allowed is the free flow of information. And so I think the, the idea of advancing is great, but the fact that the free flow of information is possible by default is actually a, a kind of a critical part of what we take for granted in the in the global internet that's absolutely provided by the by the management of the technical infrastructure and the lack of fragmentation of the of the technical infrastructure that would um, in in all sorts of ways in all sorts of different scales and geographic dimensions might um, might get in in the way of of allowing the free flow uh, at all so I do think I do think um, number two although it sounds a little political in saying that we're advancing the free flow of information. I think the enablement of the free flow of information is, is a fundamental thing that we, we, can, uh, we can very definitely get behind. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Any other, any other comments here? For the, okay, please. So I, I want to, to connect what you were saying, um, the free flow of information, but I think we also have to deal with the question so about the integrity of information, what information is, what kind of information do we want to have? Is it is it censored information? Is it uncens uh, uncensored information? Or is it even artificially produced information? And, mm -hmm. and if we want to guarantee free flow of information, then we were saying, okay, yeah, we want all all the stuff from coming from AI f free floating on the internet, and I think this is um, the question of today: how we deal with this, uh, what we see as information, and, and as a, a good and productive information for everyone. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Jordan. To <coughs> make it for for the gentleman. Thank you. Um, <coughs> thank you. Just a couple of observations to add into the discussion. Um, I think uh, when I read this declaration as a CCTLD operator, it wasn't clear that there were any changes that were being asked of us in what we do. 
Um, so I think it's just, that's actually an observation I've borrowed from my colleague next door, but, but it, it is an important one to just note because it can lead us into the trap of sounding conservative from this community about saying that everything is fine. So I want to loop back to the first comment to say that we do need to be engaged with these higher level issues around development, around human rights, around the positive potential of the internet as a technology stack. And that comes partly to Lisa's comment about the um, connecting things to some SDG-like goals so that we can show that there is a positive impact from this kind of internet and that our niche as a technical community and operating it consistently and stably is just by itself a contribution to the global public interest. Um, the only other comment I'll make is that the declaration itself does represent in the nicest possible way a form of governance fragmentation. We have this multiplicity of different tools and statements that come. Um, and I think that's natural in the kind of choppy geopolitical waters that we are in. But I think that we uh, should lend our voice in an organized, structured way as a technical community to advocate for a more harmonized and consistent global framework uh, to make life easier for us and all of the other stakeholder groups so that we don't have to engage with 20 different declarations or 20 different processes. And ideally, gluing it around this very IGF framework that we're all here to be part of today. So just a few things to add into the mix. Thank you. Next, by Byron, to Byron, please. Sure, thanks. And I would definitely uh, support Jordan's comments. One of the, when I, when I read uh, the declaration and I read these five principles, of course, intuitively, they make sense. I can support them. Mm -hmm. As a technical operator, and if I, I often revert back to one of my favorite images, which is the seven layer stack of, of technologies, and where we as a DNS operator in particular, as a CCTLD operator, what do we really do? We run a registry, we run the DNS, different CCs have different flavors of what they do. But as a DNS operator, operator ourselves, trying to maintain an independent, fair, trusted, unbiased technology layer that we provide to all others is the foundation upon which they build their presence on the internet, however it is, whatever it is. To me, that is the critical job that as a DNS operator, CCTLD, that we're engaged in. And while of course I want to advance and promote and protect and do other things, I'm often concerned that as a technical operator, when we drift into public policy oriented activities, it puts us at risk as a, as a trusted independent uh, technical operator. Of course, I and many of the people in my shop have very strong thoughts and ideas on how the internet should be operated, but it's a fine balance between being that fair and trusted technical operator and taking particularly strong advocacy positions. And I'm not saying we don't. In fact, we actually do in a domestic way. But I think it's worth noting the challenge and the fine balance that as technical operators, we kind of we kind of ride on because it's easy to tip over and then start to become more biased on a particular policy issue. And in our own domestic environment that may put our independence as a technical operator at risk or make it suspect. So I, I just, you know, I'd like to get other technical operators' thoughts on that. How far do you stray into non-technical issues? Any other, oh, okay, Martin. Mic is on, Martin, please check. Normally you hear my voice, but now everybody hears my voice, also those online. <laughs> uh, Martin Bottemann. So, so, of course, all five are important, but what we can offer is an enabling infrastructure, and that should be our first priority. Then that we can also, from our good heart and as good citizens of this world, promote the other ones, that's fine. 
But if we don't offer this enabling infrastructure and we, we are at that task, I think, I believe, then it becomes more difficult. So uh, how the infrastructure is used for the good or for the bad is not always in our hands, but we can make sure that the infrastructure ensures integrity of where you go, of the messaging and things like that. And uh, uh, so in full support of the full declaration, but uh, this is what I think the technical community should work for. And Lisa has something to add to that. <laughs> okay, let's uh, pa pass the microphone to the right, right hand side. Okay. Okay. Hi, Lisa Four again. I just wanted to make a quick comment to uh, Byron's uh, shout out to the technical community about how far you can move uh, on on doing uh, advocacy, because as I see it right now, uh, 20 years ago maybe uh, standards were standards and how we worked were much more apolitical. Uh, and I, I do believe in an open and uh, trustworthy and uh, equal internet for all, but that's a thing we need to protect and that has become political. So I think there is no way we can shy away from doing advocacy for the baseline that I hope we all believe in, in the open internet. So uh, to me, it's, it's not a matter of... Um, that we uh, try to stay apolitical because uh, it, it's 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 a thing that we lost a long time ago, and uh, it, we just need to be out there and advocate for the open internet. So. Thanks. Pa pass the microphone for again. Thank you. Oh, good morning. Yes, Vivian here from New Zealand. Um, I wanted to comment in a bit of a similar vein, actually. I, I'm always asking myself the question, when there's a discussion of independence, who does the independence, the state of current independence favour? Because there's always a bias in what we're doing. And, um, you know, yesterday I spent the day at the Women and Girls, including our whole diversity um, workshop, and I was really struck when the government voices joined that forum that they started off saying, we really need you. And this morning the same, you know, we really need you. But it's like, that's the end of the invitation. I'd really like us to get to, okay, so what does the technical... Uh, Jordan, I want to really jump off your invitation into, so where do we um, bring how we would like it to look in terms of all these processes from here. So I feel like I uh, want to really support your comments about, look, these principles are all great. It's whole. It's a whole. None of them will work without the others really well. Now, what about the process of bringing that forward? We've got the GDC. We've got all these things. So as a technical community, um, Paul, you've mentioned... Uh, don't forget the importance of the technical community. So I'd love us to talk about how do we want to operate and work and pull together the thinking that goes into whichever of these, I'm still learning about all these sets of documents, um, and I don't yet understand how they all relate. But it does feel like the technical community is a constant across all of them and we need to organise to bring our thinking forward. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Hi, Lynn Hawes. Um, I'm relatively new to the government process. I've only been there 10 years, but I spent 40 years in the technical community. And one of the things that I found in bringing uh, my technical uh, views to the government was how do we explain the, and it was mentioned several times, how do we take this architecture and how do we bring that explanation to the policy community so that when they're trying to address items, they have that view of the architecture in their mind and they can address it saying, here's a problem, what part of the architecture do we need to assign it to? But I will say one general thing that I talk as we get, as I teach this in the policy community is that the word inter of the word internet the inter part is the hard part. And, and when we talk about fragmentation, we're not talking about 
everybody learning the same, to speak the same language, we want all those languages to be able to interoperate. And I, I think that's a, a critical part of the, the way that the technical community looks at this is how do we make these disparate systems and these disparate data structures interoperate with one another as kind of the primary thing. And that's a different way of viewing it as opposed to saying everybody has to speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's a, that's a perspective that the technical community can build into uh, and have that discussion with the policy folks. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, okay. Susan, please, please go ahead, maybe the online intervention. Thank you. Uh, just a housekeeping note. We thought it'd be helpful to put the, the questions on the screen here. Um, it would be a bit easier for folks uh, to see and have also listed the, the DFI principles down here. Um, if we need to refer back to them. So I'm in your hands, Akinori. <laughs> um, I don't seem to see any uh, questions uh, in the chat at this okay. point. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker is next to me. Okay. Thank you very much, Wolfgang Kleinwächter. I want to comment on Byron and, and Lisa about you know what is the fine balance, as Byron has said, between uh, to be apolitical and technical or political and how far you can go. We had this discussion 20 years ago in the WIKIC, Paul mentioned it, and we came out with the formulation in the definition of internet governance where we differentiated between the evolution and the use of the internet. So the evolution is certainly related to the technical layer where we use all the same protocols, and the use of the internet is to the internet-related public policy issues. There's an interlinkage, but these are two separate shoes, and we have to be aware both on the interlinkages and the differentiation. Um, the problem is in the early days, uh, this one world, one internet philosophy uh, relates mainly to the technical layer, and the dream was 25 years ago, this will, you know, go up to the application layer. But the reality is, and we have faced this reality, that we have 193 different national jurisdictions uh, on the application layer. And the risk, what I see now, is that, you know, there are some governments who want to translate this 193 jurisdictions model to the technical layer. I think this is a challenge. And in so far, uh, we have to be very careful in uh, saying, you know, what is part of the um, quote unquote national sovereignty of a country where we can uh, advocate or support groups, but the strongest uh, instrument for technical community is if they speak with a united voice. I think 10 years ago, when after Snowden, there was this I-Star meeting in Montevideo, which really you know, had a tremendous impact. What I've seen in the last years is that the technical community is not operating anymore in a united form, so there is no permanent meetings where I raise the voice in uh, policy meetings like the open-ended working group in the United Nations or the negotiations on the Convention on Cybercrime. So there is one single voice from one technical community. Other. If the technical community acts united, then they have a much bigger impact than to do it in a, in a single way. And as you have just said, you know, the, a, a lot of governments today understand quite well the technology, but they have a different plans. They have different intention. Though it's not anymore we have to teach them and we, we, we have to inform them about how it is. So we have to be united as a technical community and to say, this is what we uh, uh, have, to, have, to, have to save. And this is probably uh, a good guideline to find the right balance. It's difficult to find the balance. We have to differentiate. But uh, uh, we cannot be, as technical community, be apolitical. That's impossible. Thank you very much. Um, uh, as uh, Susan reminded, we have the, the, uh, the substantial priority uh, was uh, maybe intended to the 
um, priority among the, the five principles, which is, which is raised by yeah, her. And then if you get uh, the paper handout, then it, it, was, it is uh, described in the overview part. Then, uh, uh, then uh, with, with that, if you need to, need to uh, articulate the priority, then it is, it is welcome. But uh, as, as, as I said in the, in the beginning, uh, that we have the three, three other uh, yeah. aspects of the discussion, and then I, I'd like to encourage you to, do, uh, to ma make the, your intervention for the cooperation modality, please. Uh, so I, it's moving to the, to the section, but uh, still welcome that you, if you say, say something for the, the first part of the priority. Then Jordan, the mic, please, my, please bring the microphone to the far end. Thank you. <coughs> um, thank you, Akinori san. On the on the cooperation modalities, I think it's important to pick up on what Vivian and Paul and Wolfgang have all said in slightly different ways. When you think about the technical community organizations, we're often very focused on our narrow focused remit. And we're often within our forums and debates that we have focused on, we have guardians and guardrails. You know, I can, must not deal with content is a classic example, right? Mm -hmm. And so the forums where we come together with a broader focus to look at these higher level principles seem to be really limited. This is one of the main ones that happens, the IGF process. But even here, we often end up in rooms with each other uh, where we are not necessarily trying to hammer out a common position together. Whereas, you know, I remember my first IGF in Bali, the civil society groups had a whole day of working out shared positions in advance to then advance through the process. And I lament the lack of that at the technical community leadership between ICANN and ISOC and the RIRs and some of the bigger registries. Because I think it's, it's the gap of those common positions that is giving the opening to some people to marginalize this community as a legitimate stakeholder group. If you're not exercising your voice, eventually people are go not going to expect you to, and eventually they might write you out of the script. So to secure that vital role, which I think there is for the internet technical community, because of the principles that we've advanced and our ability to be a guardian of the layer that, that Byron and others have talked about, we do have a responsibility to collaborate in new ways. And if we were to do that, I don't think we're going to solve that today, it would mean that the cooperation modalities of, in issue of um, initiatives like the DFI would have something to attach to, some group to talk to, mm -hmm. some stance to refer to. So I think there is a leadership role that's crying out to be played within the technical community to pull this together. I don't know if it's another Montevideo statement, uh, I don't know. I don't know how it is or what it is, but I feel like I see the absence of it, and I just wanted to put that very squarely on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next one. Um, uh, as, as a moderator, I'm, I I need I usually need to focus on the you know, moderating, but uh, I I have I have some say for 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 that part. Uh, I, I was Im impressed to see the, the de declaration of the future, future of the internet for the first time then. It's like, uh, you know, stipulating the, what the technical committee has been doing then in a, in a governmental declaration. So that's a really new, new to me then. I, I, I'd, li I'd like to, you know, the figure out what does it mean then. Uh, that's, that's one of the, the you know, theme of the collab uh, collaboration modality. Um, uh, to Jordan's point, I, I completely agree that the technical community needs also to take some leadership in this. But what I also think is extremely important is whatever we do as a technical community also needs to be communicated widely. Because what, what we do as a technical community hasn't has a very uh, big importance for everyone around the world. The internet, uh, all the technical standards, 
whatever uh, uh, you are running is creating the foundation for uh, many, many things, businesses, people, uh, and, and we saw the, I just uh, discussed the sanctions uh, that was raised on, on Russia where I can get the internet running. That's extremely important. We cannot uh, create the fragmented internet ourselves. So again, also to, to Wolfgang's point, we cannot stay apolitical, but we need to keep the basis of an open internet up and running, and that, that's, the, for me, the most sacred uh, uh, of, of all of this. But if, if the internet uh, uh, or the technical communities are to take leadership, you also need to be better at communicating this leadership uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I think IGF has been good, but uh, IGF is still a bit a closed club. This declaration for the future of the internet could be a good starting point. But again, my dream is more. We have uh, uh, SDGs for the internet. Everyone knows the SDGs, even small businesses all around the world. They use it, and they use it for their businesses. If we can have the same for the internet, mm -hmm. that would uh, kind of implement what we do much better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Marco, please, please bring the microphone to Marco. Yeah, sure. It, 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 it's the government um, hiding in the <laughs> back of the wall. Uh, no, I, I was triggered by uh, something something uh, Lisa said um, uh, about uh, yeah explaining what you do, and, and I fully echo uh, uh, Jordan's earlier comments about sort of reunifying the technical community and have that, 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 that leadership position, a strong position, but I think it's also important for you to explain what you don't do. People already mentioned like, yeah, we're, we're sort of apolitical, we don't want certain things to go into the technical layer, and I think it's also very important to explain what you do, but that that also sometimes means not doing it because it's not your role and you want to keep that neutral enabling role and i think that's also lacking a bit from the current conversation thank you next uh, thank you very much uh, washington i'm just bringing some uh, personal comments not representing anyone or any organization uh, the themes brought by the uh, leadership panel makes me feel that mm, they want to do something, but they don't know what to do. And they want to act, but they don't know what to act, which is, personally, I feel awkward. For example, um, you have a feeling that you want to uh, compose a poetry on it. You don't say, I want to compose a poetry, and I squeeze the feeling for it. So it's, it's in the opposite way. I want to say that uh, status quo is the status quo because it is already the best situation after our best possible uh, solution and uh, multi-stakeholder, all kind of stakeholders, bargaining and negotiations and competitions are already the best result. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any other points? That's really good discussion. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Byron Holland. Um, I, from a, I guess first I just want to clarify. I didn't say we should be apolitical. My point was about how far do we stray from what our task is in layer three. Of course we're going to have political decisions to be made and political perspectives on the operation of that space. It's really more about do we stray up to layer seven and have thoughts and comments on that? Maybe, maybe not. But as we do, we run greater and greater risk of compromising the, our both real and perceived expertise of running the foundation of the internet. And that's a risk that we take when we stray too far from our core remit. I think but it's also valid to say that over the last handful of years, perhaps COVID and years prior, that in the post-Diana world, we all, many of us went back to our respective organizations, home countries, and uh, focused on our core tasks. As a result, we don't have as unified a voice as maybe we had, let's say, through the Diana transition. 
as an example. When it comes to um, um, working together as a community, I think that's a very good point that we're maybe not doing it as much as we had during that period. But of course, and I'm, you know, nobody's said the words WISIS plus 20 yet, but as we enter the next couple of years, we are very much going to have a period where we need, in my opinion, to pull together with common messaging as we go through the WISIS plus 20 uh, process. And I thought it was interesting that this document, I think uh, the American representative said there's about 70, there's 70 signatories, roughly, right now. When I think back to um, the wicket in 2012 and how that broke down, it was roughly 70 who supported the wicket in 2012. We're probably going to have something similar in nature as we enter or go through the WISIS plus 20 process. And I think when, we, when, we, when we're thinking about community, when we're thinking about voice, when we think about what our core role is, it's going to be very important for this community over the next two years to try to come together with common voice and be sharing that voice through the WISIS plus 20 process, which is very much going to impact us, potentially. And I think it's really our role to share our thoughts, perspective, and expertise in that process with all the communities because 70 have signed up for this. There's 193. There's a whole bunch who don't share the views that have been espoused so far in the last half hour or hour. And it's incumbent upon us to be advocating for our views. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Please bring the microphone to this. Thank you, Paul. I want to make a comment on, on a slightly different track, which is about practicality and resources. Um, because we seem to be telling ourselves that we've got a lot of very important work to do and the work's becoming more and more complicated and more uh, critical. Um, the, the technical community, um, I'm not sure what we think it includes, but if we look at, um, if we, if we look at who's actually contributing, then I, f I find a lot of this work is being done by the non-profit technical administrative organisations, the ICANs, the RARs, the CCs, um, and so forth. And I'm not sure that we've got the resources to do what we're telling ourselves is so important, and I'm not sure if we're, if we're yet selling the message effectively enough to actually gather the resources to do what needs to be done. I mean, Byron mentioned a, a, a critical thing over the next um, couple of years which um, sounds great, it sounds like cooperation, um, but cooperation doesn't come for free. It's really actually a very challenging and expensive thing for us to do. And I find that if you look across all of the organisations um, that, that I'm talking about here, the, the technical non-profit administrative bodies, uh, we're all actually struggling a bit at the moment financially. I mean, everyone is, is saying that the, uh, the fi financial conditions we're in are, are pretty tough and we're not, uh, we're not expanding. Uh, at all, where in some cases contracting and, and in some cases being um, being um, denied um, resources or increases in resources by our, our memberships and so forth. And I just want to, that's a bit of a reality check as to how this stuff is going to be done. Um, in supporting the IGF, I think um, something that uh, something that people may not know, but the NRO being the, the collective of the RIRs has been the one consistent contributor to the to the expenses of the IGF secretariat ever since IGF started, and there's there's actually nobody nobody that's contributed more than we have on that on that IGF um, fundraising effort, and yet over the 20 years we're talking about an internet that's become many times more valuable, <laughs> many times more profitable, many times more complex, and yet I don't see a, a change in the way. Uh, the critical work that we seem to be talking about is actually being funded, frankly, and being being resourced. And it really is a sales job that that, uh, frankly, the uh, I would say all of us internet uh, technical organisations actually need quite a bit of help with, uh, if not actually active contributions to the to help us to do the work that we seem to think um, still needs to be done. And I mean, we all know that there's within the RIR community, there's there's. Uh, been an RIR in crisis for quite some time. Um, it's just just one more example of how times are changing very dramatically. Costs are rising very dramatically, and I think we're kind of we're fooling ourselves if we think that we're going to be able to do very much more than we're currently doing. For instance, in being here and being at other and at other gatherings and coordinate coordinating to the extent that our resources allow us to do. Uh, if, if we're going to be able to do more than that. Um, 
only if uh, only if we we really can raise the bar on um, on the resourcing that's um, that's being made available to those activities. Thanks. Thank you. Bring the microphone mm. to the middle. Thank you. Okay, I, I appreciate being inter uh, able to intervene here as I'm still formulating uh, a bit. Um, the, the space that I would caution about prioritizing resources, because we need resources, and I hear what you're saying that you've already put a lot in, is that we're actively seeing now a lot of countries and a lot of governments that do not hold point one and two at their center um, are at the forefront of providing resources, and they're providing it in this venue that we're in, uh, you know, the conversations that are hosting this year and next year, um, and they're influencing a lot of the spaces where internet governance happens. And so if we say that the most important thing is to chase fun funding, which I don't think is what you mean, but it, you're, you are saying we need to figure out how to get funding resourced, um, we're going to get pulled away from, from points one and two uh, pretty dramatically. And so I think, um, you know, I think Lisa's sort of call to arms a bit about like, we, we need to have, we need to have a goal that we can rally around. We need to have metrics that we're going towards um, because you're right, when we have these fragmented organizations that are under-resourced, um, part of the strategy is to have us be diluted in, in as many spaces as possible. Um, because we're not able to work as effectively and we're stretched and we're you know, sort of overextended. So when we have a common goal and we have a common mission that we're working towards, then we can take small pieces of that and drive forward in it. Um, and if we have some metrics that we're measuring and data that we're making public about it, uh, then I think that we can at least feel that we're working towards a common cause and have that um, leadership voice in there. Uh, and as somebody who works with a person who made a very large contribution to the world and did not monetize it, uh, it makes a big difference when you have money and when you do not, what, how long and how wide your voice carries. Uh, and I think we should just pay attention to whose voice gets to be the loudest in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just uh, add to that? And yes, World Wide Web has contributed greatly to this becoming so popular. Otherwise, we just have the connections and still the typing on the command line, which which wouldn't have made it as popular as it today. So fully recognizing that. Uh, it's not about the principles, I think. Uh, and, and it's two roles we all have here. One is as citizens of this world, and one is as technical community to make certain things happen. And, and I think what we can do, and I think what we're committed to do, and what we also see is happening, is that we are enabling, again, also, the protection of human rights, uh, promoting of global internet, all these things, by making the internet more and more secure, more and more reliable on it doing what you think it does, more and more hardening the internet in ensuring the integrity of the addressing of the messaging, and, and that is key. And if we look at, for instance, how this developed in IETF, which is setting a lot of the global internet standards, nowadays, part of any standard they make is the cybersecurity component, is how do we make it more secure? Uh, I can see that in there, there's also considerations of human rights, maybe. Uh, but I know for sure that uh, there's also also progression, also in ITF circles, to talk about, for instance, sustainability. That's a new work stream coming up in ITF. And, and take that aspect into account by how we provide the standards and the internet to the world. So in that way, I think uh, one thing is, as people, as organizations, we can all support and stand behind all five points. But again, pleading for the focus on getting our work uh, done well and enable the world to make use of an open internet that you can rely upon. Thank you. Mike, do here, please. Thank you. Sorry to come back to that uh, comment from from before, but on resourcing, I didn't, I wasn't um, ex in, intending for a moment to suggest that someone external, parties external to our own organisations and communities, should be funding us. I think. Many, many or most of us would rather starve than that be seen to be accepting resources at all for the risk of, uh, you know, just for the risk of, of those resources being potentially tied 
Uh, so I'm, I'm actually talking about self-awareness within technical communities that we've got to better sell our, ourselves and our missions and our broader missions to our stakeholders and hopefully with the support of, of others who also rely on us to have, that, to have some understanding of the fact that, that is, that's, uh, that's needed because um, I mean my, my point still stands is that we're kind of, um, in, I mean it might seem in some way that we're starving ourselves in not being able to sell properly, fully to our communities, but we've got very diverse communities and we've got different, different debates going on. We've got people who say, well, RIRs shouldn't be charging any more than the sheer cost of, of maintaining who is records. And if we did that, then you know I wouldn't be here, and and, and <laughs> um, very much of what we do wouldn't be wouldn't be happening. So, I mean, I'm just I'm so, I guess I'm I'm certainly not asking for um, for charity towards these organisations because I actually think the job we do is so important to it directly to our stakeholders, and our stakeholders should be able to to foot that bill. <coughs> but it's kind of it's it is kind of tough, and uh, and so if we're going to raise the bar on our performance and our activities, then that's something we're all going to have to. Have to have to face and sell better. Thanks. Thank you, Susan. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> good. Excuse me. The title of this event is called "From Principles to Action." So I just, um <coughs> I was wondering if it might be useful, and this is a very practical approach. And it's, um, but if I'm looking at these DFI principles and I'm thinking, how can they be advanced through? the technical community, whether it's um, our colleagues in the numbering space or the naming space. Um, some of the things that come to mind um, are advancing inclusive and affordable connectivity. If I see advancing inclusive connectivity, I, I think of universal acceptance. I think that would be a way to put the principle into the, um, action. Um, if I'm looking at uh, promoting trust in the global digital ecosystem and thinking very kind of um, granularly on the policies that um, the technical community, different parts of the technical community use to, in, to ensure that um, their, uh, their account holders or their subscribers are, um, can trust in that organization that their their personal information is protected um, <coughs> so for what it's worth I feel like it's kind of coming out of left field but um, just in in terms of advancing from principles to action that might be something that the group might also want to consider in the the time that we have left but over to Aki Nori who is the okay thank you very much Hi there. Is it on now? Sure. Thank you. I inter Boland with Aaron, one of the RIRs. Um, and, and thank you for that intervention, Susan. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, when I looked at principles, which I hadn't looked at in over a year, actually. And so thank you to uh, the governments uh, for organizing this session on the DFI and bringing it to our attention again. One of the things I realized is that um, my organization's mission statement actually covers to a certain extent, two, three, uh, four, and five. We, we don't cover human rights in our mission statement, uh, but we do cover those other four, and we are held accountable by our members and our community, and I can report to our community what these principles are, but I can't tell them to implement them. That might take um, an attendee or a participant in one of our meetings from a government to come and say that what these principles are and request that our members implement these. I'm just thinking out loud on some of these things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please. I think uh, it's a very important question how you go from principles to action and one of them uh, what I tried to say in the beginning is we have too many uh, declarations, too many things that we're, uh, or uh, um, too many declarations that uh, tries to s say kind of the same. 
So if we could merge them, and, and we have the Global Digital Compact coming up, we have uh, the Summit for the Future where all of this will be discussed. To, to me, it's, it's important we find some common principles overall that also embraces this uh, uh, declaration for the future of the internet. And then we set some more granular targets and, and more actionable uh, uh, targets because as this, it's, it's easy to say I comply, but how do you comply? How do you, how do you measure it? So, uh, and, and I think it's, it's important we do this in the broad way. The multi-stakeholder community is ideal to discuss what, what kind of more granular goals could we have, but also how do we uh, hold anyone accountable for it? Because that's the second part. We need to all to be accountable. Uh, and, and this is why, again, I, uh, 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 in the leadership panel, we try to make this also internet for all uh, um, framework, which is on top of everything. So I, I want us to merge all of this into to one, uh, or one set of goals, a framework, uh, because right now there's too much and uh, people get confused. Thanks. Um, here comes another idea. I think somebody has raised what is the technical community. If I look around, more or less, we are the same institutions as 20 years ago. So, and uh, but the technical world has changed also in the last two decades. And what about outreach? Uh, is there a technical community in the sector of space communication? We see now, you know. Elon Musk's uh, Starlink, now Amazon is planning this. These are people which are very close to this established, I would say, DNS community or things around. What, uh, in, the, in, the, in the mobile communication field, you have also a lot of technical communities. So I think they are challenged, these people working there, has nothing to do with the IGF or with ICANN, but they are facing the same global problems raised in the, in the DFI. So it would make sense, you know, to start enhanced communication uh, and leading to uh, also enhanced collaboration uh, with this uh, with these other groups. And a final comment, you know, um, what I have also experienced in the last years is, while everybody agrees, at the end of the day, you need somebody who pushed for the process a leader. That's why we have the leadership panel. And in so far, it's also a question of leadership in the ISTAR uh, community. Thank you. Thank you. I, do, I would just like to respond to that on the, on the composition of the technical community because it, it might look much the same, but it, uh, it actually has diver expanded in diversity and in number and uh, the CERT community for, for one thing, if we, if we include those, have grown in, in number um, greatly over the, last, over the last 20 years and this is only ex uh, sort of increasing the need for what for what you're saying, Wolfgang, is that the uh, that bringing together this community actually is more challenging than it than it was 20 years ago, for sure, um, because there are there are certs, there are also network operator groups and numer numerous others that are that are increasing in kind of a number and in diversity and in their own personal their own individual challenges. Thank you. We uh, we have the the another 15 minutes uh, to conclude. That's a time limit, and then. Uh, uh, yes, the we are, we are discussing quite quite a bunch of overall uh, situation, not only the the priority and the modality, and we we still have the process and the has, uh, uh, measurement of the success. And then uh, please uh, please uh, keep uh, that that in mind. And then if you had a comment, please uh, raise your hand and make it. Jordan. Um, thanks. D uh, one of the things I like about what Lisa was saying before is this idea of specific goals to help sort of give some trajectory to the internet governance debate. Um, out a reference to that suggestion, I can't remember if we gave you credit or not, Lisa, um, in the, the Internet Governance Roadmap we published in August, because it seemed to us it was, if we could elaborate some goals like that, it would give the 
the bigger and broader digital policy debate something to connect with the internet governance debate about and that that was sometimes missing sometimes it feels a bit like we're in our in our cave we're in our sort of deep tech even though it's not particularly deep tech dialogue at an igf and there are lacks of hooks for policymakers to understand what we're trying to get at so it might make us more accountable to the broader global society to do that but the puzzle one of the puzzles is the process to elaborate such goals you know if we don't do them here we floated the suggestion of something like a 10 years after net mundial event um, which i know others have been floating as well and that was appealing for one reason well two reasons one there was an existing set of principles in a framework that you might want to review and elaborate um, probably the more important one was that it was a genuinely multi-stakeholder approach to having the discussion Anyone who was there 10 years ago remembers there were four queues. The four communities had an equal say one by one. So it forced a sharing of views together in a way that hasn't happened before. In the existing institutional structure of dialogues that we would otherwise have in the next year or two, um, there aren't many opportunities like that. The IGF is one of them. But the next IGF is after the Global Digital Compact will be negotiated. So I'm interested, Lisa, if you've got any or anyone in the round the room, obviously, if there are any particular suggestions about how we might elaborate such goals and any other particular views, whether people think it's a good idea or whether it's barking up the wrong tree. Yes, thank you. Just a very brief intervention on there. It's just because of the location of the next IGF, there's also going to be a significant widespread boycott by uh, civil society. Um, I'm not speaking on behalf of civil society, just noting. Okay, we're trying. Okay, just the point of to say I wouldn't necessarily rely on this as being a space where we could have a significant co equal multi stakeholder process. Um, so, yes, anything in the interim would be uh, welcomed and appreciated. Um, since I have the mic, uh, I am curious how uh, people have been breaking down each of these components into things that are specific and measurable. As an organization that works on measuring the speed and quality of the internet around the world, we try to use speed, which is a you know undefined term, as a proxy for people's personal experience. And so we're working with ISOC now on an internet quality barometer to try to expand a bit more from the technical community what it means to have quality internet service. The uh, civil society community has done this a lot with meaningful connectivity, um, but so we're trying to get the, the technical perspective in there. Uh, and so I would be curious if there's other kinds of initiatives that do get to those specifics of metrics that can be measured. Okay. Michael Ramsey here. Yeah, thank you. It's, yeah, it's honor. Uh, Bastian Gosling's uh, RIPE NCC. Um, in listening mode until now, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, discussion. A um, lot of stuff I uh, agree with. Thinking, you know, in terms of uh, measuring success, I'd initially, I, I look at the uh, list of uh, partner countries, right, that uh, undersigned uh, this uh, declaration, and that's probably already indicative of the, the geopolitical context, you know, all the tension surrounding it. So hopefully being positive, eh, measurement for success, having more and maybe some more surprising countries uh, uh, undersign this and commit to it. And then when committing, um, I'm thinking of accountability, right? Uh, opening up for a multi-stakeholder process now, but it's uh, countries that sign, governments that uh, commit to this. I, 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 I think as an idea, it would be nice eh, in terms of being accountable. Okay, you commit to these principles, but is there then also in terms of when um, within a jurisdiction or a country, you know, comes up with uh, re regulation, le uh, legislative initiatives affecting the digital sphere. Is there, can you actually check, right? Is there a way to actually see in advance whether you are committing and sticking to the principles uh, and not doing anything uh, detrimental there? I'm also thinking of the, the example that was referred to earlier by Lisa, uh, um, a call from the Ukraine uh, that affected ICANN, but it was also directed to the RIPE NCC in terms of deregistering uh, IP address space for uh, Russian operators and basically to get cut them off the internet, which we could not uh, commit to mm -hmm. or not follow up on. 
It's basically maybe to some extent in line you know, with the principles here. But on the other hand, um, the Rappian CC is headquartered in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, part of the European uh, Union. We are affected by sanctions uh, regulation. And other things, um, we are indirectly affected by uh, OFAC regulations coming from the US. These are uh, European Commission. Uh, the Netherlands, the US, having undersigned these principles, I think you could argue that some of these endeavors are actually conflicting <laughs> with these <laughs> principles. So it's about accountability here. And you know, I'd argue uh, we need to get something there and hopefully make that actionable. Thank you. Thank you. This. This. Yeah. Um, uh, two quick comments. One to Wolfgang that we should uh, have a broader involvement. Completely agree. But we need the car industry, the insurance, the banking. They all relate on, on technology now. They all relate on AI. There are a lot of, of industries that need to be here that are involved in what we do. Uh, the second one was uh, to Jordan on how to create these goals. We need to do it bottom up, but we also need to have a framing first and then have the reaction from the bottom up community, mm -hmm. but also be very respectful of it. Because if we start on a blank sheet of paper, uh, it's, it's never gonna fly, it's gonna take years. We don't have years, we need to go there now. And uh, how to do it in, in, a, in the most respectful way, I, I don't know yet, but I'm trying with the leadership panel to create a process that we can come out and, and suggest for this community and others. I'm going to sound like a stuck record, but on, on a challenge, um, I, really, I really do think the major challenge we've got here is to resource the public interest efforts of this community uh, in this environment, which is so much more complex and challenging and multidimensional. Jo Jordan mentioned a plethora of documents to respond to, right? We're not going to be able to unilaterally do anything about that. We, we ignore them or we respond. Uh, Lise uh, mentioned the uh, people who should be here and need to be reached. Uh, the process of reaching people to bring them in is not, is not, doesn't happen for free. And I think IGF itself is a great example. I think 18 years of under-resourcing of IGF has really put it in a position where it's seriously under threat and, and with, the, with better resources to run a secretariat, to run the MAG, to run the event, uh, could have well made a, a, a very big difference to the event that we're in now today and, and its, uh, its future in the, next, in the next couple of years. So I really do think from, you know, from the point of view of a non-profit organization, uh, trying to do this increasing amount of work that the resources that we have like those around us are constrained and, and are seriously constraining our ability to, um, to, to contribute uh, to this effort, and that's one of the major obstacles I feel we have. Mm -hmm. okay. We have the five minutes remains. Maybe you can you can make the final remark for this discussion. Testing. Yes. Well, I'd like to uh, iron ball with Aaron. I'd like to thank the governments again for coming to uh, the, the IGF and having this session, uh, Japan and the U.S. and others. Um, I think I, it's been, ec as said before, it was excellent discussion. Um, perhaps, uh, lost my train of thought. <laughs> Essentially, I ju I ju the point was to thank the government for bringing this discussion and, oh, the thing that I wanted to say was, and including the, de the technical community as one of the, pr of one of the four stakeholders uh, of today's uh, breakout rooms and discussion. That, that was really excellent and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Susan, do you have, do you have any concluding remark? Pass the mic, please. Um, just to also thank you, everybody, for coming together and spending this time uh, to discuss the principles. Um, when we go back into the room, uh, we will 
uh, have a brief readout from each of the breakout groups. And then Special Envoy Donna Donahoe will try and tie everything together. Um, there's been a lot of planning that's gone into this event. Um, and I personally am just very excited about putting the report together and putting the messages together. Um, so really, it's just offering my thanks to everybody for, for being here. All right. Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much. The, the quite uh, valuable uh, uh, intervention. And then uh, that's a <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the supporting me as the moderator. That's a quite you know the the first time that you don't you don't really uh, you you didn't really sp speak up, but uh, you know five minutes is uh, just just enough to have have the you know <laughs> full speed you know, of the discussion. Uh, thank you very much, and then uh, we we will resume in uh, the the, uh, the the big room uh, in uh, uh, twenty minutes. Thank you very much.